Hola, mi gente. Welcome to another episode of Sazon Talk. It's been a while, ladies and gents, but we are back. Live and in color in the studio. Good sound, good audio. <laughs> Feels good to be home. But uh, we do want to thank everyone that has, you know, once again, so far been on this journey with us. Um, that's listened to all the episodes that you can once again find on the Java Taylor Podcast Network on our YouTube page. Also, um, you can find Sasson Sessions with Amanda on our Instagram page at Sasson Talk, um, where she gets very deep and personal topics <laughs> going on. But we are back at it. And this episode, um, we're going to discuss, I mean, we've, you know, discussed marriage and relationships and all that jazz. But we're going to dig a little deeper in this one. This one, we're going to talk more about, like, you know, what, you know, the pros and cons of divorce, you know, the pros and cons of marriage. Mm -hmm. um, is marriage a, a business deal? Is it a contract? Is it, does, is it a 360 deal, like, in the rap game? Or is it more, you know, is marriage needed? Like, we're going we're gonna to ask, you know, some deeper and thoughtful questions into that topic. But before we do get into that, what's new, Amanda? What's been going on with you? How's life? Are you watching anything new? Because, you know, we haven't really had, like, I haven't touched you physically recording an episode. <laughs> so, um, I'm trying to think. what's new in the world of Amanda's world? Amanda's world. I mean, I can't fully discuss a lot of things that's happening in my life. I mean, tell, but, tell the things you can say. Yes. Um, shit, I don't know. I'm, like, so, so exhausted. <laughs> but Jersey Shore is back tonight. Oh, the winter when they at the resort and Snooky's on the season. So yes. I'm actually excited about that. Yeah, I uh. knew. Well, I had a feeling that she was going to record again because um, they had like a behind the scenes thinking that J. Well, I mean, sorry, not J. Well, um, Snooky and Angelina, or they were like at some restaurant and the, they saw the cameras and stuff. Oh, uh, okay. so somebody took a picture of it. And it was like, uh. Uh, I think Snooky's back. So, yeah. Oh, I did, have you finished watching Selena? No. Oh my God, we're never gonna talk <laughs> about it. Uh, so it's crazy because, <laughs> so me and Mikey finished the season, the part two, and literally we've been in a dark hole of Selena shit for the past like two weeks. Like literally, we'll sit like he sent me videos of like he found on YouTube. I'll send him videos that we I found on YouTube. Like mm -hmm. literally, just conspiracy theories and uh, all different types of like clips of like. Yeah, I have to it's, watch it. It's bizarre. I, sh I should have watched it when I had the week off. But uh It's okay. Other things occurred. Life yeah. life happens. But um I'm trying to think. Uh you know the world's opening back up. What's one yeah. thing you want to do this summer? Outside of this your birthday summer? that's yes. coming up. The big three O. How do you Love feel? It. I mean, I'm going through a lot right now. That's a you lot know of what? changes, and my best friend was saying, "Oh, you got the dirty blues," and I was like, "The fuck is that?" And the she's dirty like, blues. Yeah, meaning like that's a thing. Kind of. I mean, that's what she told me because she's thirty. She's gonna be thirty three. Oh. And so everything I was discussing with her, she said, "Oh yeah, I was like that when I turned thirty, like before." And I was just like, oh. I was saying that's what it was. It was weird because I started thinking about like you know because I'll be thirty two in September, mm -hmm. and I was like maybe it's because I don't like odd numbers because I was like thirty one was like blah. But then, I mean, I, I wouldn't have met Mikey. We wouldn't have had Tessone talk. Like, there's so many other things, though, outside of, yeah. like, the actual number. But I would say, yeah, that 29 going into 30, it's very eye-opening. Yeah. I think a lot of stuff. I mean, I know when I look back, yeah, my t yeah, 29 going into 30, it was just a lot of revelations of, like, things that, you know, I wanted to I wanted to shift in 30 versus, you know, how they were in the 20s. Um and change is okay. It's not it's not a bad yeah, there's thing. There's a lot of changes It happening. may all happen all at once where then now you feel like you're drowning and you you can't get up, but there's always something I think on the other side of the fence. So I think, you know, 30 is going to be really good for you. It's yep. going to be it's a new but, chapter. Um, we got a lot of adventures coming up. Yeah, so I'm excited. Yes, yes, yes. So yeah, back to that summer. What's one thing you want to do this summer, and then we'll get into the topic. I don't know. Well, besides like my birthday stuff, I don't really know because I have to work for during the summer. So it's just like I haven't really decided what it. I might drive like somewhere just because. That's dope. Yeah. I'm so. trying to get this license. 
do you know? car rental and just drive somewhere just because. I think that's dope. I th- I I always think. So I think that's what it was. My 29th birthday, I was in such a transitional phase. I had just started working at Carmine's at the time, so I didn't have PTO. Mm -hmm. Like There was just so many things going on. And I highly always recommend, um, especially when you're in kind of like the, you know, the bulk of your adulthood, taking a solo trip is like life changing. It can be scary. Mm -hmm. So my 29th birthday, I had went, I couldn't go anywhere like, far or like in between so i ended up just going to niagara falls by myself okay and it was the first time i ever took like a trip by myself like i literally like my mom she's notorious for doing that but she had told me like oh here's um the company that i used um because it was like a tour it was like a tour company like literally mm-hmm. we went from new york drove the bus it made a few stops and then you did an overnight in niagara falls you did the falls in the morning and see stuff and then we came back to new york um, the next day, and I went by myself, and I was the only black girl on the bus. So I felt safe because I was like, they can't leave me because mm-hmm. I'm the only black girl. They're you, so, they going to know something up. So um, I actually ended up having someone, someone drove to come meet me, actually, nah. <laughs> in, in Buffalo. <laughs> Story of my life. States, shit now. <laughs> States. Stuff. <laughs> shit. <laughs> now that I think about it, it wasn't really a solo trip. <laughs> I mean, you went there. By I went yourself, there by myself, but you weren't there yeah, by yourself. I wasn't the evening time. I wasn't there by myself. <laughs> so, only me. <laughs> only those things would be that would be a Janelle thing to do. I, I can hear. Oh, so you went over there and you met somebody, huh? Yeah. <laughs> but he, you know, you know what's crazy though. All my crazy stories, like mm-hmm. I think he's like, anytime like something like this will happen, and I'll be like, oh, story time with Janelle. Let's go. Like mm-hmm. I'll tell him. Like, because it's the past, isn't it? You know, the person that right. individual now is married, has a kid. Like, it's it's not even like a, a it's a non factor. So, but I do I recommend, um, especially for you, um, taking a little solo trip. I think the drive um, to nowhere I think is a really good idea. It's a really good stress reliever. Um, I think it's a really good um, opportunity just for you to just kind of reconnect and recenter yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, the summertime's here. Yeah. I mean, I've been getting the tan even not without going to the beach, so I'm just like, okay. Oh, that's so, good. I'm not so pale right now. That's good. <laughs> yeah. I well, because I'd be outside. Listen, I'll show you. Hold on. I was about to be like, you are a little tan. You know, that's Look. pale. Oh. You see it? Yeah. That's just from being outside in the playground with, with the, the kids. kids. But that happens. When I used to mm-hmm. teach um, the summertime, and I wasn't, I mean, because I'm not running after no kids like that. But <laughs> when it was like I had to watch them and stuff like that, I was mm-hmm. just like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm dark it, all summer long. It just was yeah. like, this isn't going anywhere. Yeah, so but. I'm like happy because I didn't want to be so pale for my birthday. So now I got a little color. Ooh. Have you picked out the date? You, have you picked out the outfit? I have. And I'm only asking so that I don't clash with what you're wearing. <laughs> like, it's oh, what, no. <laughs> like it was such a personal like. Girl, what you wearing? So I know either because we notorious so where like you know I love me a good romper. Yeah, I know and so you. do you sometimes. So I was sitting here like, let me, no, I'm not let wearing me a ask romper. I'm wearing quick. a romper for my actual birthday. Okay, but um, not for the events that's gonna happen. Okay, because I was either gonna pull out a romper, or I was gonna pull out my Miami Vice outfit. I don't know what I'm gonna do yet. <laughs> but we just have to wait and see. Yeah, I'll show you my outfits later. Okay, cool. Well, all right. Let's get into this episode's topic. As I mentioned before, we've, you know, had previous conversations about marriage. You know, as everyone, if you have not listened to the episode before, um, Amanda has been married before. So she, you know, has been through that 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 journey, that chapter of her life. Um, <laughs> as much as you probably, like, hate it. Like, but it's a part of, I, I, I always encourage people to embrace, mm-hmm. you know, the bads and the goods. Yeah. I think it's important because I think we always get caught up in like the negative, the negative side of those things instead of looking at the positive. But first question, Dima, what were some benefits outside of sex? We spoke about this, Janelle. <laughs> sex did not exist. Well, that's what I'm saying. Outside of sex, but <laughs> it was a disclaimer. Don't do me like that. <laughs> but what? <laughs> it should have been. A, it probably was a doubtful. But anyway, Listen. Um, what were but. 
good thing. What were some good? What were some benefits of being married? Or like, what do you think are some good benefits of being married? Of being married? Um, in my case, it for uh, for me it was more like I was making my family proud. So okay. Something that they wanted me to so do. So a sense of accomplishment. Yeah, it was an accomplishment. So when it kind of went downhill, it was just like I felt like I um. I mean, my, my parents, like, disappointed and stuff like that. Okay. So, um, but, yeah, when I originally, like, got married, I was just, I wasn't really focusing on myself. I was more focusing on what my family thought and stuff like that. So, in that benefit, it was, like, not beneficial to me, but it was beneficial to them. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm trying to think because I went through a lot of hell. So, it wasn't a lot of happy times. But... But, like, outside, but so think of it outside of yours. And, like, what do you think? Like, if you, like, think of it. Like, you didn't get, you haven't been married yet. I can't think about so many positive things because, obviously, like. Well, well, okay. So, what would you, what would make you get married again? I don't even know if I'm going to get married again. Mm. Mmm. Cause that, listen, that's like, a deeper thing. One of the the things before, like when I was younger, I used to be like, you know, I'll just be secured with somebody for the rest of my life. But seeing a lot of things that I've seen, it's just like it's not even a for sh- a for sure thing anymore. Like shit happens in marriages and relationships, everything falls apart. Yeah, you got people out here. We were talking in pre production. You got people out here like billionaires millionaires mm-hmm. have been married uh over 15 20 yes. years and now are getting divorced and now you know that i think that reset is 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 a hard it's hard mm-hmm. the hard reset it is and it's just like the whole because like when i got married and then we went through our divorce my whole thing was just like oh my god like to go through the process all over again of finding love Mm-hmm. And somebody to saddle with, it was just so draining. And then uh, obviously things had changed at that time. Well, w- so was it more <laughs> draining to be married or was it more draining to go through the process of divorce? Which one, in your opinion? Because I look back, so, like, not that I have never been married. Everyone knows I ain't been married. Ain't nobody mm-hmm. put a ring on it yet, even though. <laughs> Just <laughs> say it. Somebody decides to jump, jump. But <laughs> but um, my parents were married um, over 10 years and then got divorced. Um, so, like, I always question, you know, my mom then. I mean, now as, as older I got, I understood a lot of different reasons why she decided to stay. Um, but I felt like her being married was more draining than the actual process of getting a divorce. I think that, yeah, I think being married to the person that I was with, yes, because I was very unhappy. But I never made the step to I'm done because I believe in fighting. Okay. And so, but obviously because, you know, we know that he cheated. So for me, that that was the end of the deal. You do something like that to me, I'm. That's where I cut the ties. If we're not, we're not bonding and all that other stuff, we can work through it. Mm-hmm. So, um, but one of the most scariest things that I've seen is when people fall out of love. It's yeah, that it it can. That's a, I think it's like that. You you ever been on like Nitro, at Six Flags? No. Okay. I haven't gone to Six Flags. Like, ever? Ever. What? I only go to Tony Park. What? <laughs> yeah. There's something new every day. Hmm. Wait, so do you like amusement parks or no? Not anymore. Okay, we'll talk about that off camera. But no, it's nothing, it's nothing bad. It's just as I got older, um, the, the, um, the rides started to make me nauseous. Okay. So that's why I don't go on rides but anymore. Example, but I do like a good water park. The, uh, you know what's so funny? I've never been to Downey Park. I don't want to wet yes, my we, hair. We got, oh, okay. <laughs> that was always the thing. I was like, I don't want to wet my hair. <laughs> but, <laughs> but let me put Curly Sue back in and then we can, we can go. Curly Sue need to come out. Yeah, no, nah, I think it's I'm going to put, put Curly Sue back. Um, 
probably August, probably after Jara Slam. Yeah, because I just don't want to deal with it, I think. <laughs> I needed something different now because I was just like, I'm so tired of it. But <laughs> now I'm like tired of this. So yeah. Like, uh. So when I get Curly Sue back, we can get on all the water rides you want because <laughs> <laughs> I can't do that right now. <laughs> but yeah, that's fine. But no, I think in terms of my metaphor in terms of the roller coaster was so like on Nitro, it's almost like a 90 degree angle. But the way that it goes up, like it, you, you, it's like, are we there yet? Are we there yet? Mm -hmm. But the drop is so like, Intense. holy shit. And then yeah. it's like, but then you think you got over it. And it's like, no, it's still going. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like that at times is like the definition of like any relationship. But more importantly, your marriage. Because you go through all these uphill battles and struggles and things like that. And then you get to a point where you free fall. Yes. And a lot of people don't recover. So that's the thing. I think for me, it's more of the recovery of the free fall. Yeah. And especially what, what always used to get to me was that everybody sees what they want to see. And so everybody, when whenever it's a relationship a breaks or a divorce happens, just like, oh, my God, but you guys were so happy. And I'm just like, yeah, because we painted that picture for you. So why do you think people do that, though? Like, I mean, it's not to say that I think you should put all of your business out in Front Street because that backlash. The one thing I always hate whenever I like me and someone that we used to talk to and we don't talk to anymore, that that's the main question is, what happened? Oh, like, yeah. what, do you, what do you mean? And it's just like, you don't really want to have to. And I think what people don't consider is asking those questions is like almost like, reliving a car wreck over mm -hmm. and over and over so you get that like that same feeling like when people would ask me like yo what happened like when with me in chicago it was just like what happened like he was he was just here what do you mean and it's just mm -hmm. like you keep asking me the same question i keep reliving the same moment you, you keep talking about and i don't want to do that yeah so i think at times people aren't as mindful as they should be probably to certain situations and also too people don't mind their business <laughs> People know that's very true. People know the because, like, the obviously, the person that we don't talk to anymore. Like, I've been asked a lot, but you were so close to this person, and da da da. And yeah, I'm like, that's oh, how I was with my with my um ex. Well, I guess yeah, my ex best friend. Same question. What happened to y'all? Y'all was so close. Like, what do you mean? It's just like people. Unfortunately, no matter whether it's a your relationship with a best friend or mm -hmm. relationship with with a person, whatever it is, it like people do outgrow people, and yes. I think that's. A realistic thing but when in terms of the realms of being married though I think it's important that being married you don't not only not lose yourself because I, I, I feel like a lot of people that I've known to have gone through either like a bad breakup or a divorce even in that matter they have that sense of like they don't know who they are yeah and I think it's just so important to uh, have that understanding of yourself and I feel like your partner has to always <laughs> still have that intention on getting to know that person like yep. who you were so like for you who you were at 22 is now who you going now who you are at 30 hell no so and it's the same and, and even even if who i am at who i was at 30 is not who i'm gonna be at 32 like that's just realistic as fuck and yeah. it, it is what it is but i think it's important for the person that you're with or your partner to be able to still want to get to know that person in that moment and be able to adjust. Cause I feel like that's that, that's that missing link when people are like, all right, I'm done. I don't want to do this anymore. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, is it because it's too hard and you, and you want, you don't want to do it? Or is it because you just have mentally and physically outgrown the person where it's just okay. like, I need to, I'm move. not sure if I mentioned it in our podcast or maybe I was just having a conversation with somebody where in my early child class, we were talking about the development of life. Mm -hmm. And my professor was saying that a lot of the um, marriages that started at 18 end up in a divorce before the 25 because f from what they say, by the age of 25, you start to kind of understand the things that you want. And yeah, no, I ain't get that to about 30. Yeah. <laughs> that's what, that's be, what they say like, around be, 25, frankly, maybe a little bit older. I'll be frankly honest. That, so, that didn't really hit until about 30. They didn't hit about, about 18 months true, ago. Though, like, <laughs> From the from me being eighteen to me being the age that I am now, my wants and needs are totally different. I feel like they change every so often. Like yeah. they're, they're not gonna be I mean, I think everyone's 
to, I think for the most part, everyone has like a foundation of, you know, your requirements, mm-hmm. what you need, what, you know, but the, it, it's an ever, I think it's an ever changing scenario yeah. that pe- most people don't know how to adjust to. And I think that's where the issue, especially within a marriage where you don't know how to adjust to the times that you're in. Like you have, you know, I mean, everybody's relationship is different. People have different understandings. Cause like we had mentioned when, um, Tasha and her, um, and her co-host Alyssa, who, happy happy belated birthday, Alyssa, if you're listening. Yes. Um, where we spoke about like the whole thing of being a, either in a monogamous relationship or you know having more than one you know person you're dealing with. It's just like <laughs> your situation is yours, but there has to be some level of understanding, and it has to always kind of like a check in. Yeah. Like, listen, three years from now. If we don't X, Y, and Z doesn't happen, we we need to have this conversation again and revisit. And I think there's that lost form of communicating in a relationship that that's really out there right now. Cause so like my question to you, and we can, you know, elaborate a little bit on it, is like, what do you think? Do you think the value of marriage has decreased or increased? Um, like, do you feel like people appreciate like, are people getting married for the glitz and glamour? Are they getting married because this is what society tells us to do? Mm-hmm. Versus, are we going? Because look at look, biggest example, Goldie fucking Hawn. I don't know who's that. You don't know Goldie Hawn? First Wise Club. Oh, baby girl. <laughs> what I'm gonna do with you? But her, yeah, what am I going to do with you? <laughs> I don't know. How you don't know Goldie Hawn? I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to, example, those that are listening and know Goldie Hawn, it's fine. I'm probably going to get but her, it up. You don't know who that I'm now. Yo, I'm going to tell Brittany <laughs> that the, within the next month, you got to watch the first Wild Clubs, and she will tell you and show you who Goldie Hawn is. But example would be Goldie Hawn and um her, it's not, they're not even like, like, Common law, they're probably married as fuck, but mm-hmm. her and, um, what's his name? Kurt something. I'm gonna look it up real quick. Mm-hmm. But her and her, her significant other, they're not married, but they've been together for over 30 years. Mm-hmm. Never been married, never, you know, they have that understanding of like, this is our relationship. So what do you think is the value of marriage in this current day and age? As I find Goldie, Hunt, I'm really upset that you don't know Goldie Hunt. <laughs> Like the shit is gone. Um, just because I've seen it a lot, I remember I grew up more in the church world, so it's more about like you know you're trying to please God and the church, mm-hmm. and you want to do it because you're Kurt Russell. It in. You know Kurt Russell. It's okay, but Goldie Hawn is like, bitch, the first class <laughs> club. <laughs> Oh, okay. Yeah, see, I know a lot of the people by, like, face. That's Kurt Russell. There you go. Oh, he was the one that played, um, darn it. Uh, it's, a uh, yeah, it'll come to me later, but I know who that is. But that, they're not legally married. They've been together. So my stepmom and my 18, dad. Since 1983. They dated okay. 20-something years. They got married, I think, three years ago. See? But Why? Well, because the marriage was, you know, she, that's what she wanted. She, she wanted to be married. I mean, she's like, come on, like, there ain't nobody else that want but you type of thing. Because she, you know, she wanted that type of, that that feel to be his wife. Like, yes, I've been your girlfriend for so many years, but. So, so then, so then the bigger question is, so are titles important? To some people. Are titles important to you? To me? Yeah. Of course. It's it's me you're talking to. <laughs> but then it's the same person that's sitting here talking about, I don't know if I'm going to get married again. Well, I, it's ah. because, listen, ah. you know my situation. A, I'm not, listen, I, I'm not thinking about that, though. I'm but just saying. Does it, just because I don't know doesn't mean that I want love. Or at least. Um, well, love and title are two different things. Like I, I like, know that. Like, I can, like, for instance, and I'm probably, he's probably going to kill me. <laughs> my ex from college. Uh-huh. Now we're, I don't want to say we're like Bethels because that, that would be like, that's misleading <laughs> as fuck. But we're in a space 
where because of how our relationship started, where we were best friends and we would talk about everything, make each other laugh, send each other stupid shit. So like we're in that phase where he'll send me stupid dumb shit that he posts on the internet all the time. But there's just certain people that, and like I told him the other day, I said, yo, I just want to let you know I appreciate you. And I'm always gonna have love for you, like regardless of, of anything. Like he's in a he's in a situation, I'm in a situation, but I need him. To, I need you to know, like, cause life's not guaranteed tomorrow. So mm-hmm. I didn't want you to, you know, walk around that thinking, you know, I don't give a fuck about you. But you get that whole like, yeah, I'm always gonna love him, but that doesn't mean I gotta be with him. Like, I, yeah, you know what I mean. So that's why when I asked, I said, like, what's it, what's more of the value? Is it the love that's the value, or is it the, is it the title that's the value? But when you said, I don't know how I'm going to get married again. It's just like, what well, a because, bitch. Like, Titles don't mean shit to you then. Ask me something in like three months or so. So this should have been a topic we, we talked about <laughs> next year is what you're telling me? No, I said three months. I didn't say three years. But you can't put a, listen, you can't put a time stamp on your feelings and your emotions either. Because no, even. Listen, I need to work on me. Uh, that's why i was saying you know ask me like three i mean because i should be a little better than where i'm standing listen every day is gonna be a better day what is it that rupaul says okay yes okay exactly but i just i just wanted to know is titles more important than the actual value of love For, for some people yes for some people no some people just get married just because Listen, I know people that got married because the guy had a lot of money. So they're a bunch of gold diggers. Yes. Huh. I know them. We're not friends. I just know. And there's just people that get married <laughs> that because they had a kid. And I, just didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know where that was going. I was just like, oh, okay. <laughs> I'm just saying. But um, also there's people that get married just because I know somebody, she's a year older than me, but she got she had a kid when she was 17. Oh. And because it was under the religion, they forced them to get married. Are they still married? No. Oh, why? Because they didn't love each other. Oh, so it's funny. Like they were it's they funny. dated on and it's off. It's funny you but... mention that though, because I think when you sprinkle in different cultures, it becomes a different conversation. Yeah. Because when you look at like, for instance, the Indian culture. Mm-hmm. They oh, yeah. do a lot of arranged marriages. Yes. A lot of families get together. Just like, oh, what's the show? Oh, fuck, what's the name of the show on Hulu? That, don't ask me because I don't watch Hulu. No, me and Wilkins, Wilkins actually kind of got me into that stupid show. And I had I was watching it. It's um, fuck, Rami. So, Rami's family, they live in Jersey. Mm-hmm. Background story. It's a good show. I highly recommend it. If you've never watched it, it's on Hulu. So, Rami was in the space where he was just, like, he the first season he was dating some some white girl that his parents didn't know he was dating. So, <laughs> so he had to hide his relationship because his parents forever in a day was trying to fix him up with somebody. Mm-hmm. And then the second season, more or less, he ended up finding someone within, you know, the religion because he's Muslim. Mm-hmm. Finding someone in, within the religion. It wasn't so much of an arrangement, but it... um but it played a role into it. So with arranged marriages though, yeah. I, I'm intrigued to knowing the the actual like statistics because you you hear I've heard a lot of stories where people get like arranged, you know, like, yeah, our parents put us together. But then they've been married twenty years. Mm-hmm. So you talking about people that don't know each other from a hole in the wall. It's not even so much of like to the, then going shit. the distance. What it was something I think that we both were watching. Oh what? I don't I remember. It was, I know it was something on Netflix, so maybe it was me and Britt. But, like, they found out of, um, that the grandmother eventually had, like, an arranged marriage, and she didn't know. Oh, shit. But, you know, and she's still with him until he, he passed he away. Died, yeah. And it's just, like, a lot of... I, I actually know people from high school with the Indian um, culture. Mm-hmm had arranged marriage already. They were like 16 years old and they were already, yeah, like, they already promised when somebody. You, when you're at age, that's when you're going to walk down that aisle. And yeah. it's just like, but do, so hypothetically, do you think arranged marriages end up more in divorce than, un, than, than regular marriages? From what I've seen, no. Mm. Which is... Did, did you fuck it? You, you opened the can. Fuck it, it's just like, yo, <laughs> fuck it, it's just like, <laughs> 
They go like this shit is what like I sat here and I was just like, yo, yeah. arranged marriage is nine times out of ten from what I've seen. Right. They they good. They all right. I can't imagine. Can you imagine being in like a marriage? fucking not having that. a kid with that person and. I'm gonna. I'm having a kid with a with a stranger. I mean, essentially, that's actually not a range either. You having a kid with a, a stranger. <laughs> I mean, it's technically still a stranger because I mean, a lot of them don't. They have kids right away. Yeah. So they haven't really been fully married. I think the the girl that I know, she wasn't even married a year and she got pregnant. So it's just like, I mean, I knew my ex husband for five years before we got married. Oh shit. So it's just like imagine. Yo, so that. like, would you? So would you think? Shit, the wheels is turning. <laughs> so do you think when people, let's say, blind dates, like hook people up? Uh huh. Do you um, think that that people like that stay married longer? Cause look, not greatest example, but recent example, Cynthia Bailey. Cynthia's ass went on fucking Steve Harvey and was talking about love and all that because the nigga she was married to before, first of all, he was too fucking old. Second of all, he was rude as fuck. Third of all, just all of the above. Like, <laughs> he was trash. <laughs> fucking embezzlement. Can't hold the business. A, a whole plethora of things. <laughs> Cynthia had the money. It, it just, the list goes on and on. But she went on Steve Harvey. Mm-hmm. And the man that she's married to now was the man Steve had hooked her up with. Oh. Legit. Like they know, like met on that he met they met on that show. He said, yo, let me take you on a date. She said, uh, not right now, because I don't know my schedule. I don't know. But okay. And from there, they fell in love. Got I don't married. know because I don't know. It's, Would you it's have somebody hook you up? I wouldn't let you hook me up with somebody. I, shit, I wouldn't let me <laughs> hook me up with somebody. The fuck? And I'm not gonna, I wouldn't do it. I'm not going to say why. Because I know why. <laughs> I know why. Listen, I thought it was a good shot. I thought, I thought it was a good shot. <laughs> but I should have known better because my, listen, my basketball record in this, in this fair game of fucking single life that I used to have, it ain't good. Shit. <laughs> And let, let me say, also in because the beginning, no, it was your, solid. Your fucking your freaking list. Oh mine. One oh, of your own? list tried to act like he didn't have nothing with you, and then try to get with me, and then I find out from you that you guys were talking. I was just like, motherfucker, like he lied to me. Listen, I've made tons of terrible decisions. <laughs> tons. Like I, so have I. I will not deny my luck in <laughs> the pool of men. Like I can't deny. I can't run away from that. <laughs> I, I still question how I how I snagged the one I got now. <laughs> like I still look at myself like, bitch, you did that? You sure? Because that's that's beyond me. Mm-hmm. But okay, not me, because I'm out the game. Like I'm not hooking no. Know. After that, I told I told Party A and Party B, y'all niggas is on y'all own. Like I want no parts no more. Mm-hmm. So outside of me though, would you? In 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 a in a fairy tale world, would you? have a friend of yours hook you up because essentially when your friend does it they do it so like when i did it i did it more i actually didn't really do it like Mm -hmm. as much as the other person will probably say i did but all i did was i brought the person to help a sister out and boom and guess what i didn't give her the number she they they exchanged numbers that got nothing to do with me I That's my know. story, and I'm sticking to it. But <laughs> would you have one of your one of your girlfriends, or even a guy friend, hook you up? I mean, I would never have Wilkins hook me up with anybody, even though. Oh hell no! I would. Uh, even no though friends. I love Wilkins. If I was single like, no, and it just you. was about like, oh, let me just smash and dash, I probably then I, that's that's fine. But long term wise, I probably wouldn't. So, would you have a friend hook you um, up? I'm gonna go with a no. No, why? Because I don't. I personally. Because we both know this person that's always hitting, not always hitting me up, but he's always telling me, like, yo, so your friend is single? And I'm just like, my friends are off limits. 
because I don't want to have a Janelle experience. What's a Janelle experience? <laughs> tell, tell the listeners and viewers because I don't even know. Listen, where, you know, you're being the one that's put, why did you introduce me to this person type of thing? So I don't want to be put into, first of all, I don't want, if it's a good friend of mine's, female or male, I don't want to be put in the middle, like, because something happened between them two. I'd rather avoid that situation. I don't want to hear, well, this, this, is and that, and then the other person, this, this, and that. But I don't then, want to put it in the middle of but anything. But then could you be essentially blocking your blessing, though? What if it... Because in all honesty, in all honesty, and should probably kill me for this, but they two peas in a pod, low-key. Dumb niggas is two peas in a pod. Like, I, like she, she going to say what she want to say, but after closer review of the entire situation... <laughs> Dumb niggas is low-key two peas in the pot. So it was just like, mm, it's not really Janelle's fault. I don't know. Like, if it was our circle, I would say absolutely not. Because... But then your friends know you best, though, no? I can't say what I got to say. but And I can't either because I definitely want to say something. <laughs> and I was just like, but you know what? The same, okay, what I want to tell you is the same thing I told you previously mm-hmm. about an individual. Yes. Same, same feelings. Mm-hmm. Same feelings. But yeah, I don't know because because I, um, yeah, if it was a uh, yeah, absolutely not. Because my other friends are more involved in the church, I don't know if I want to go that route and again. Mm. So that's why I'm just like, mm, I've already been in both routes, so I'm just like, I kind of would just do it, things on my own. Gracias, pero no gracias. Uh, but uh, it's not me. <laughs> but I do like that you named it the Janelle experience, though, because I feel like <laughs> that. Tuh, that isn't that's 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 an eye opener. I was just like the Janelle experience. The Janelle experience. Let me not really say that, so the niggas really think it's an experience. And be like, hmm, you're sadly mistaken. It's not. Right. Not so. anymore. But um. So then. Last few questions or last few things we could talk about before we end the episode. Um, so why do you think so many m- marriages end in divorce? Like, what do you think is that key factor that that's missing? What's that missing link to keeping people together? Because I feel like divorce, I mean, I, I've lived through it through as being a child of it. Mm-hmm. So I wasn't even really a child. I was 17 going on 18. So I was pretty much. You were a teenager. I was pretty much one foot out of the door Mm -hmm. and one foot in the door. But what are your thoughts? Um, One that I've seen a lot is that one of them checks out. Mm. And they're just like not willing to fight anymore. It's just like they don't care amount of years they don't care how many kids we've got together i'm checking out i don't want to do this anymore and what bothers me too is that i know somebody that this recently happened to and the person checked out and she was saying like everything was fine two days ago before we he split because he definitely like we went on a date he was saying how much he loved me and all this other stuff Two days later, I'm checking out. Like I'm, I'm gone. So it's just like, what the fuck? Yeah, no. I, I've, now you're messing with. I've experienced that. I understand that. Not so in, like, I feel marriage, like but... a lot of, a lot of you know, a lot of females and a lot of males don't want to deal with certain things anymore, and they check out. Mm-hmm. And so usually I always say like, listen, if you want to get married, you got to be willing to fight because it's not. It's, it's like a relationship where everything in the beginning seems like everything's all right. We're in a honeymoon phase. But the more years you get put into it, the more it's hard work. Oh, absolutely. And so, you know, the only it's like re, It's is, like putting you know, money into a house. It's like flipping a house. Yeah. You add value. You add these touches, your personal touch to it. And then... To see, so that was always my thing. When me and my ex, me and my ex were together, what, seven, almost seven and a half years. Mm -hmm. So when we went our ways, it was just like, I was actually, I think, more upset at the fact that some bitch was about to benefit all the shit I just put into this nigga. Like, (laughs) (laughs) I I really thought about that. Like, I was just like, yo, someone's really about to wreak all these benefits that I, 
I, I put into him. I made him a better person. He's, yeah. He could be thoughtful. He could be man. romantic. All that, all that shit. All these supporting details that I done just added to this nigga's portfolio. Right. And now I can't I even totally benefit from it. So this shit. So even so it's crazy because like even now, I think sometimes I get like it's hard because I mean, granted, I'm a hundred percent in my situation because at this point I ain't got no choice. <laughs> but plus it's it's but just that's another but thing it's just too. natural. That's why people check that's why people also stay in the marriage because they're like, I got no other choice. So that was actually my mom. My mm -hmm. mom was in that role of, well, who's going to watch y'all? Right. So when I was like mid-20s and we had this like conversation because forever and a day she thought I was just angry and upset at her about certain things. And it was just like, no, I just didn't understand why you stayed. I said, listen, I was 11 mm -hmm. telling you, ma'am, check out. I said, mm -hmm. we're going to be good. And for and her to say... Well, just straight up, she was just like, the reason why is no one was going to watch y'all. Like, me, like, once again, me and my brother are about seven and a half, eight years apart. So, when things went left, like, with my parents, or just even growing up, like, he, my my younger brother was always the baby. So, I, who going to um, watch us? You ever seen um, Madea's family, uh, not family reunion, sorry, Madea's funeral? Mm, possibly. It's. I think it's the last movie that Tyler Perry made. Oh, is it the one on Hulu where the guy was it sleeping? It is on Hulu. It was the guy, the, the father was sleeping with the girl, with yes. the girl, and then the brother was sleeping with the brother's girlfriend. Yes, uh, that's one of my faves. That one. One of my faves. So that one, I think, is a great example of you just kind of just because the the so the mom. And the husband, you know, they were married. Yeah, but she knew what type of time it was, and that's she the part knew, that she knew. But she stood with him. Because of the kids, because remember she said that she tried to check out. She well, tried. To, she, she left. Yes, yeah, she left. But then but she was struggling. She right, and it's just like at that point. But when she said that, I was just like, "Sis, we, you just gonna have to struggle. Like, there's just no way yeah. that I'm gonna <clears throat> consciously stay in a situation and knowing the person doesn't respect." But that's you, uh, correct? Not everybody's like that. But guess what? <laughs> Janelle's final words. Janelle's experience. You, listen, <laughs> don't do that shit. Like it, it, right. it ends up. Do, I think it, it ends up doing more harm than good because mm -hmm. then people. I mean, granted, you want to look like you're the strong one. You're the one that you know you toughed it out. You fought. You tooth and nail. You got through the trenches. But then at the end of the day, what you said? She sat there and buried. And they all was looking but at she, her. She was happy. They couldn't understand why she was. She not was crying. Yo, they couldn't. She was happy. As yo, they couldn't understand why. The funeral was like within two days. Like yeah, it was just like, like, why are you buried? Why are you why in a rush? Two days. What's going on? And it was just like I, I was just like, well, you know, maybe she just want to get over. It. I, I didn't think nothing of it until she was a, she was sunny side next to Mike Tyson in the fucking yeah, she said, top down. Y'all do what y'all do what y'all want. Y'all grown. I'm, I'm gonna out. do me. <laughs> but that, but you know what? But that I think that was why I I was so like confused, especially with my mom. But it was just like because I just at the end of the day, your happiness is everything. Mm -hmm. And when you're not happy, it it that energy everyone feeds off of that. So it's like days where you you're sad and and, and you're broken down and you're depressed and all of that. And you know and and that's why it's super important. Like if and when you know you have kids or like anyone when when kids are involved, you gotta kind of do what's best for you. You kind of have to take a smidge of being selfish mm -hmm. because. <clears throat> What you decide to do is going to tremendously affect the child. Yep. And that's why it's always important to, you know, do what's kind of best. Yeah, you want to, you know, consider everybody involved, of course. But you kind of want to do as best you because that's the one thing about kids. I don't know what type of thing it is. I don't know if it's a science to it. But kids know when shit is wrong. Kids know. They know. It, they don't gotta you. They don't. They don't gotta hear a fight. They don't have to hear you cursing each other out. They don't have to hear any of that. Listen, one thing that they I know. remember, um, I saw a lot of stuff when I was a kid, and I never wanted to say something because I didn't want to be the reason my family broke apart. And it was at that time it was like me, and my little brother. That's it. Mm -hmm. But I was still. I was maybe like six, seven years old already trying to think. Like a a grown person strategy plan, and so but now that like we're talking about this and I'm like actually I know so many marriages present that they've been married maybe forty fifty years, 
and the guy has cheated or the wife has cheated and they still put up with the shit. They stay with the person. Because when you think about it, and I think we, I don't know if we've spoken about deal breakers, but that mm-hmm. essentially, when you think about it, you, listen, younger, I was the queen of, if he cheat, I'm out, ah, 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 you know, and it's just like, every situation and scenario is going to be different, mm-hmm. and it's not to say, that's why it was funny, I, I saw something like on the internet, like, can you rebuild trust, like, can you do this, can you do that, and really, you can, anybody can do really anything you want to do, you just have to put the work into it, you have to yeah. put the dedication into it, and I think we get so wrapped up on, you know, the actual sense, the word cheating, instead of really taking, pulling it back and understanding why, understanding what what got us to this point. And I think that's how, for me, at least how I look at my current relationship with Mikey is just like, we're super big on communicating and we're super big on, you know, like, Niggas ain't perfect. Yeah. Like, it's, it's, it's not to say, like, I'm, you know, he dogging me out, I'm dogging him out. It's not that. But it's just, like, you have to, in a sense, be realistic. And I think when you're, the more realistic you are in your situation, I think it helps um, add to the years in which, when you're married and, and you understanding the person and how they move and, and why they move the way that they do. Which is why, I think we did talk about Zebra because I was just, like, cheating it's fucked up. Mm-hmm. It happens, unfortunately. But I was just like, yo, my deal breaker would be if a nigga ever have a kid on me, the mm-hmm. outside of outside of the relationship. Like that that for me is the ultimate like I don't fuck with you. Mm-hmm. Like um DL Hughley did that shit. I don't know what I it came across the other day. I was in an Uber and it came across on my phone and I was just like, I think he was on some interview shit. And I said, D.L. Hughley legit had a kid outside of his you marriage? You know who else? Cause what you watch, the fuck? You watch Love and Hip Hop. <laughs> yeah, that's my shit. Atlanta. Yeah, which one? Yeah. Kirk and... and um... Listen, Rashida is probably by far the strongest female on reality TV. Because mind you, he Cause had a whole no... kid with a stripper. How about, how about you had a whole kid in front of the cameras? In front of the TV? It wasn't even on some like... It wasn't even a story that was off camera. Mm-hmm. Old girl was on TV with you. You had to interact with her at 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 shit at, at functions and shit. Mm-hmm. There's no way. That's why I was just like, you get. I think in terms of the older you get, the more you kind of shift your mindset on certain things. And that's yeah. why I was like, you know, the cheating thing. It's it's trash. Yeah. It it breaks trust. It does all these things. But if you really in it for the long haul, if you guys really pull back and understand why, that's something you can overcome. That kid shit. I know for me. I could never. I could never. Yeah. Ever. I know that one thing. Because, yeah, that, that shit is beyond we were talking me. About, um, he sure enough did have a whole child with a stripper. And the bitch had the audacity to feel a way about certain things when they when the baby was at their house and shit like that. But then Rashida, she was fucked. She, Rashida did something I didn't like. And it's something that is hard because I'm in a relationship with someone that does have a kid and, and used to be married and, and had, you know, and still has, you know, the mother of his kids. So it's certain things like it's just like I would never question anyone's parenting. Mm-hmm. There's just no way. So for Rashida to question old girl's parenting, oh, it was yeah. just like, ah, sis, I can't fuck with you on that because that's not really a place. I was just like, uh, I, I can't agree. Like, right. I get it. And that was her first kid, too. Right? Yeah, that was so, her first. Yeah, that was her yeah. first son. So it was just like, uh, and Rashida, she was young. Like, yeah. And it was just like, ah, oh, Rashida, I, I listen, sis, I fucked with you. I'm, I'm, te- I'm on your team. But that hoe, when she told him, like, yes. When they went to the, yeah, girl, when they went to the fucking cabin and they had that couple's retreat shit and she said, yeah, you know, because when I, yeah, that, no one's perfect. Mm-mm. I'm just going to end that. I'm just going to say no one's perfect. Because <laughs> everyone that. always, I mean, even though I still to this day think Kurt is a shit bag of a nigga to do mm-hmm. that. She, you know, she, she, she ain't perfect either. Right. But any last words? Any encouraging things you want to say for those that may have been looking? Shout outs to Jen and Richie. Yes. And you know what? When this drops the Saturday of that week, they will be getting married. They will, yeah. So, so shout out. I got to think about, I'm trying to think about some people that's like really, really in love 
and really promote Listen, that shit. And they when she announced her pregnancy, bitch, I, I was, was, I was in tears. Bitch, I we were at battle. We were at we were in Jersey, yeah. and I looked on my that, that was the first thing that came on my Mine's Facebook. Too. And I said, <laughs> "This bitch pregnant." Oh my god! Yeah. I said, "Look!" I said, "Look!" Is look, she pregnant. And then when it came Sunday, I was just like, you know what? If there's anybody mm-hmm. that deserves any type of what yeah. you got going on, like the stars aligned for you, sis, it was you. Yeah. I said, beyond happy here. So yeah, shout out to Jen, uh, who's going to be a Jen new and a wife, and she's going to be a, a, a two time mom. Mm-hmm. Uh, what do you think she's having? I told her she's because I asked. I said. I said, she knows. She don't. She told me that. She said yeah. they know. So I looked at her. I said, so I think you're having a boy. And she's like, Oh my god! Everyone says that. Yeah, she told me that. Too. I told her I'm team boy, and she said everybody. Yeah, team boy. she wants a boy. I so mean, I, was like, I I only say that because they both have. They girls. both have girls, and that's what I said to her. And I was like, Why not just put something in the middle? And let it I was be just a boy. like, He can have his boy, mm-hmm. and you know, you you can have your boy, and it'll be what it right. is. But I think I think it's dope when you know. Because I'm kind of in that scenario, you know, if God willing, you know, it gets to that point with me and Mikey, like you're going to have a blended family at the end Mm -hmm. of the day. And that's not always easy. Trust. (laughs) Shit ain't easy. But I think when when love is really the focus point, I think really like that whole like as bullshit as it it sounds like love trumps all. It it actually really is the truth. Like Mm -hmm. when you really think about it, full spectrum, bigger picture. It really trumps, and it and it and it definitely outweighs everything. All the drama, everything. You gotta always kind of put that stuff to the side, and always re- you have to always remind yourself the reason why this this is your person. Yeah. So, in saying that, um, but yes, once again, shout out to Jen and Rich. We pr- we are super happy for you guys. Um, any listen, anybody that's listening, if you decide to get married, please invite me. Cause I just want to get drunk at somebody's wedding. I just want to get drunk at somebody's <laughs> wedding. I've been in two weddings. <laughs> I was made of honor twice. I've retired. So even though my best friends will probably say different, but I'd already <laughs> told them hoes. Don't ask me. I'll be in it. I don't want to be made of honor though. Mm-hmm. I, I'm all, I'm I'm made of honor out. <laughs> like I told yeah, because of my college roommate and then my cousin. And my cousin Lucky, I love her because I didn't want to do it, and mm-hmm. I was just like. But then I was just like, if you would have picked anybody else, bitch, I probably would have killed you. So there you go. There you go. But um, yes, anyone getting married recently or anything, you know, holla at your girl, Sesson Talk. We could do a live session at the wedding. <laughs> and, you know, I, listen, I don't even need food. I just need drinks. That's all I need. But um, thank you guys so much for joining us on this episode. Um, we definitely, I was more excited. I didn't even think about the arranged shit like that that was off the dome was, like i was yeah. just like that just holy came out. shit it was the light bulb that went on but um thank you guys for joining us make sure to subscribe to the job Tears podcast network youtube page where you can find all our episodes including this one and then also follow us on the on the instagram because i always say the bluebird because i don't have the bluebird uh, but on instagram at um, on talk um where you can find you know information about this episode and hopefully during the summer we can you know do some some nice things some for guys. our for our viewers and i don't like saying fans that's the one i i can't get i can't get with that mm-hmm. but people are always like y'all got fans and i'll be like no <laughs> i don't mm. people love janelle no Yes. C- clearly people don't want Janelle to hook them up so no people don't love Janelle <laughs> and on that note <laughs> I've learned my lesson <laughs> I'm out the game completely <laughs> however though I will check somebody for you though so best believe I'm the best person for that Uh huh. but anyway as always I'm Janelle and I'm Amanda and thank you guys so much for joining us on this episode we hope to see you soon be soon bye mm.